Praise the Lord for young people. Appreciate them. You've got your Bibles, and you want to turn to the book of John, chapter 8. John, chapter 8, verse 36. I want to say a special thank you. You really don't know uh, or don't see a lot of times the work that Addison puts into the stuff that goes up on the screen. I have heard many a scream. <laughs> as she's up there working on it and the screen goes black or blank and uh, <clears throat> I've heard the frustration in her voice. She is OCD about what goes up here on the screen and she's very meticulous and I think she does a great job Amen. with our videos and, and things that she does. So I want to say thank you for that and the reason I say that is I about five minutes ago said, hey, can you find the pledges and put them up on the screen for me? And she always gives me that deer in the headlights look and says, okay, Dad, let me see what I can do. And, uh, and she made that happen here in about five minutes, five minutes ago. So thank you, Addie, for that. I do appreciate your work and what you do. John chapter 8 and verse 36, one verse this morning. John chapter 8, verse 36. One verse. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. One more time. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free Indeed. I want to preach a simple message, a few thoughts this morning, very briefly. Freedom in Christ. Heavenly Father, God, we love you this morning. Again, thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house, amongst and around your people. God, I thank you for the hearts of your people. And Lord, even now, I'm praying for those that aren't able to be here. Lord, we're missing uh, Jeff and Kelly as they're traveling, praying for uh, mom and dad as they're preaching in another service this morning, praying for those that may be out sick, on vacation, under the weather, where we pray for their quick and safe return and pray for healing. Lord, even now we ask that you come amongst us during simple thoughts this morning as we celebrate our freedom. Lord, we love you now. Come amongst us. Meet with us. Abide with us. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Cleanse me of sin. Free me of self. Help me to preach this morning openly, boldly, and yet lovingly. In Jesus' name, amen. As I was thinking about the message this morning, I began to look for some quotes and I'd like to read you a couple of these just very quickly this morning on freedom. We saw one in the video presentation from Ronald Reagan. But Reagan said this, freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for protected, and handed on to them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States when men were free. You saw the quote, Reagan also said this, if we ever forget that we're one nation under God, then we will be one nation gone under. Benjamin Franklin said this, where liberty dwells, there is my country. And I say this, if we lose our liberty, so then do we lose our country.
freedom must be fought for and protected. I learned many years ago, young in my ministry, that for everything physical, there is a spiritual. Everything spiritual, there is a physical. I understand that this is the 4th of July. I understand the festivities. I I like to shoot fireworks. I was a little disappointed this year that with the burn ban that we couldn't blow anything up this year. Some of my fondest memories, my oldest daughter, Dallas, thought it would be a great idea to go buy one of these 58-shot things, you know, one time. And uh, when she was still living at home and all the kids were around us, and Cat, this is not a fond memory for Cash at all. He has nightmares. And set this thing up, and... Uh, we had a gravel driveway, and she didn't secure the box. Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? And uh, lit the thing, and we're all standing around. And the first one went off, and when it did, it popped it up on top of a rock, and the second one went off, and next thing you know, it went back this way. And there's nothing like the smell of napalm at 9.30 in the, at night, you know. And we started running. And I mean, these things were aiming at us and hitting us, and, and I mean, it was they were aiming at us, and we're running, and it's going underneath cars and blowing up, and these are, and uh, I remember I grabbed, Cash was just a little guy then, and I grabbed Cash, I want you to know he's alive today because of me. I grabbed him, I, little did I know that one like blew up right on his shoulder. I mean, it hit, it burned him, it hit him. He, I think he still got a little burn back there somewhere. And uh, I grabbed him, and pulled him aside, and we were all diving and ducking. And when it was all over, <laughs> those were good times, amen. <laughs> I mean, it was all done. We just kind of laughed it off and said, let's fire up another one, amen. You know, and it's good to have fun. I, I, I want you to know it's good to enjoy your freedom. I, I, I've, some of us, some of you have been to foreign countries, and, and I've been, had the opportunity to live in some other countries. And, and uh, I, I, I spent some elementary years in Okinawa, Japan. And I remember even then, in a modern age, there were still people living in Okinawa, Japan, uh, in little grass huts. And, and I remember thinking, boy, civilization sure is good. And I, my later in my years, we, I went to high school in Munich, Germany, and I spent time in Europe. But I want to know, even walking the streets of Germany, I remember we went to Italy one time on vacation, and I had a USA t-shirt on. And uh, I'm walking down the street, and these two girls walked up to me and went, USA. I was like, USA. Oh, USA, they go, yeah, USA, good. USA, good. And I remember uh, uh, all the years I was in Europe, the Europeans would come up and go, what is, this is Europe. This is not a third world country. This is Europe. This is Germany, Austria, Italy. They'd walk up and go, what is it like to live in America? What is it? like to be an American and then later uh, we would go on a missionary trip to Africa and I would watch people drinking out of the river full of disease living and being able to walk around with Africans whose whose average lifespan wasn't much more than about 35 to 40 years old where people would walk up to my dad and look at his gray hair. My dad was treated almost, almost godlike, and I know he wasn't a god, but because people don't live that long in Africa. And it was amazing to see dad walking around and, 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 and being and living in a third world country and every place that I've had the joy and opportunity to be, even in today's day and time, with all the message going on, I'm proud to be an American. A 
I just don't want to get real political, but I just, I like my cars. Come on, I've seen what some of y'all drive. Randy likes his motorcycles. Revival fixing to break out here in a few areas, okay? Larry likes his burnt orange Texas Longhorn truck, amen. I'm not being funny. I'm just telling you, there are some places in the world you wouldn't think that in today's day and age it's that way. There are some places in the world they don't have air conditioning. And even with only two out of three working here in the auditorium, it still feels good. There are people having church in third world countries in Africa. And I remember when I went to Africa, people would start walking, walking, a week and a half out, walking through jungles, through snakes, through lions, through heat, with no food, they'd walk a week and a half to sit on the ground and hear preaching. Sit for three days of preaching and then turn around and walk a week and a half back. And here in the United States of America, we can't even fill the church house. I remember a missionary came to visit a, from, from Africa, actually from Ghana, Africa, came to visit a pastor friend of mine one time, and, and, and he had never been in the United States, and he was riding around in the car, and they went through a fast food-like uh, drive through and he had never had a hamburger, and the pastor was going to give him a hamburger and french fries and a big old tall cold drink. Somebody say amen. And, and bought him that, and the lady handed it through the drive through window, and the guy looked at him, and he said, Oh, America's good. You just pull up, and they hand you food. And I know he probably didn't realize that, that the preacher paid for it, but I'm just saying that's the difference that's what it's like living in the United States of America. We are a spoiled, rotten people. <laughs> we are. I'll look, I'll look every one of you in the face. Y'all are spoiled, rotten. And I am too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going, preach it right there, Mark. Just stay there a while. We have our houses and our home, our cars and stuff. 75-inch flat screen TVs, satellite, cell phone, swimming pools. Swimming pools, movie stars. I see these movie stars and their trials on TV, a bunch of spoiled brats. There's a point I'm going with this. For everything physical, there's a spiritual. Now watch. Just as we physically don't oftentimes appreciate what God has given us, in Sunday school we were talking about putting on the whole armor of God. You know that God has given us freedom spiritually and we don't even appreciate it. Do we, do we even care that Jesus died on the cross for our sins? The freedoms that he's given us spiritually. And yet sometimes I think we as Christians, we're just a bunch of spoiled, rotten, bratty Christians. Do you, do you, I'm, I'm chasing a rabbit here just really in part. I may not even get to my outline. Do you have any idea that you're holding the very breath of God in your lap? 
the breath of God. The words of God. Things that came out of God's mouth. Right here. And yet we'll say amen today. Close this book and just go throw it in the pew. Mm. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. See, but freedom always comes with a cost. And just as in, when we celebrate freedom in America, it came with a cost. The United States of America did not become who she is without a price being paid. And your freedom in Christ did not come without a price being paid. And just as we oftentimes want to neglect and forget the cost that was paid and the price that was paid and the blood that was spilled and the soldiers' lives who gave themselves that we might have what we have today, how often do we forget what God has done for us? I'm going to show you four things very quickly this morning. And I mean it. I know, I know there's food back there. I'm aware of the time. I, I understand. Let me give you four things I found in Scripture that God gives us freedom. Freedom. Isn't freedom good? Hey. And y'all ever paid off a car or paid off a house and went, whew. Hey. Freedom. I want you to see the first one, Galatians. And you can write this down. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures. So if you're taking notes, you might want to write it down. But I'm going to move very quickly. You can try to turn there if you want to, but I'm probably going to be gone to the next point by the time you get there. But, but just stay with me. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Do we understand that Christ, when he died on the cross, allows us to be free from sin? No, we don't have to sin. It's, it's not that Christ didn't pay the price or didn't make a way for us to be free from sin. It's we ourselves who dabble in sin. And the closer that we get to Christ and the more that we walk with Christ, the further we get away from sin. So when we're dabbling in sin, and by the way, we're all sinners. We're all guilty. We've all fallen. So it's not that because we accepted Christ that suddenly we're without sin, but I need you to understand we do have the ability to be free from sin. And I praise God that one day we're all going to stand before God in his throne room. And I love this because everybody's going to stand in that judgment hall. We're all going to have to look God in the face. And God's going to look at us and he's going to basically pull the evidence out. And the, and some, the devil's going to be standing there and go, he's a sinner. He deserves hell. And some people God's going to say, you're right. Depart from me. Praise God through the blood of Jesus Christ. One day I'm going to stand before God and the devil's going to say, He's guilty! But God's going to say, Yeah, but I see the blood. And it covers his sin. The price has been paid. He's free! We have freedom from sin. Romans 6.18 being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Let me tell you something. You're battling with sin, start serving righteousness. All right, I'm going to say that one more time. You're battling with sin, get out of the sin and get yourself in some righteousness. That's, that's what that means. 
It means the more you serve righteousness, the more you get involved with God's people, the more you get involved in the church, the more you get into the Word, the more you start doing right, the less wrong you're going to do. Number two, it gives us freedom from sin. I want you to see 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I'm talking about we have freedom in the Holy Spirit. i got to go through these real quick. I want to show you a couple things. Number one, uh, John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost from the Father, will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. But the Comforter, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit comforts us. Do you know that there's comfort when you're free? Oh, I'm just telling y'all, some of y'all, I love these people that go around, and I'm not being ugly, but wave flags of other countries in the United States of America. And I'm like, if you're so proud of that flag, why don't you go back? You want to know why you're not going back? Because it's more comfortable here. And I just feel like if you're comfortable here and you love the country so much, wave this flag. And that may offend some people. And I'm not picking on any just one. I don't know. Some of y'all are thinking it's just one. It ain't just this one. I've seen other flags flying. Do you know that it's against the law to burn a rainbow flag? It's a hate crime. But you can burn an American flag. Lord help me. And by the way, I'm not saying that we should be hateful. And I'm gonna go out and let me say it's not right to burn that flag either. Some of y'all disagreeing with me. I'm saying in a matter of hate, we're not supposed to hate them. That's what I'm saying. I'm so rich. It's not hate. They need to see Jesus in us. That's what I'm saying. I know some of y'all hesitated like, what? I'm just saying, you know, part of the reason we can't reach them is our attitude. By the way, part of the reason we can't reach anybody these days is our attitude. I could park there a while, but I need to move on. Holy Spirit comforts us. Romans 8, 26. I love this. This is one of my favorite verses in all Scripture. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I wonder how many times any of us we we say these rub-a-dub-dub bless the grub prayers and we don't understand why we can't get our prayers answered and I've done this many times I've, I've, I've gone to God and said God I don't even know how to pray I don't even know what to say I don't even know what to feel I don't know how to go through this And there's been a time or two in my life when I said oh Holy Spirit go to God on my behalf because you're the comforter you're the one who empowers pray for me you know the Holy Spirit can go to God on your behalf. You know that Jesus can go to God on your behalf. I love the fact that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit prays for us. Even when you don't know how to pray. Holy Spirit can do it for you. I already mentioned it, it comforts us, it prays for us. Notice in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it empowers us. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So what does that have to do with freedom? Let me tell you something. When you're free, you feel empowered. When you're free, you're comforted.
Mm. I got to hurry. Third one. We see the freedom from sin. We see the freedom in the spirit. You know we have the freedom to serve. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Now watch. I was thinking of this. Give and it shall be given unto you. Right? Tis more blessed to give than to receive. I never understood that verse. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been in the ministry going on now about 25 years. And about 20 of those years, I never understood that verse. Tis more blessed to give than to receive. Pooey. Never understood it. I like getting gifts. Somebody said, man, you've got a lot of kids. I know I get a lot of gifts. It's one of the many reasons we have them. So I can get a lot of birthday gifts. Because it's good to get a gift. I like getting gifts. Stay with me. Y'all don't like getting gifts? Especially when they have dollar signs in front of them. I mean, there's a point to this. But tis more blessed to give than to receive. And yet, that philosophy goes completely against what the Bible says. It's better to give than to receive. And I never understood it really until about five or six years ago. Now watch. You're in a better position to be a giver than a receiver. In other words, God has blessed you and given you so much that you have the ability to give to those who ain't got it. If I was Pentecostal, I'd go into one right now. That's why the Bible says God loveth a cheerful giver. Because when the offering plate's passed and you put that check in the offering plate or you give that tithe or you give that offering, it's because God gave it to you and you have it to give and you ought to put it in the offering plate with an amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He supplied me with it. I get to give it. Woo! There's that verse in the Bible that says if you got two coats, you're supposed to give one of them away. You want to know what that means? It means that in Bible days, you were rich if you had two coats. The fact that God gave you one and you had an extra one to even be able to give away said a lot. Again, I'm going back to this whole thing. We're spoiled. We've got stuff that we could give away. Everybody okay? We have the freedom to serve, to give of ourselves. Galatians 5, 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Acts 20, 35, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. See, we often quote that it's more blessed to give than to receive, but if you read the first part, what it means is, he said, it's a good thing to be able to give, give something you have to uplift somebody who doesn't. That's what it's saying. You're, in other words, God's blessed you more than somebody else. Don't watch. Don't abuse it. That's freedom. Freedom. Let me give you the last one. Freedom from sin. Freedom in the spirit. Freedom to serve. Here it comes. Y'all ready? John 8, 32. You shall know the truth. Truth. 
shall make you free. You know that we have the freedom to get up every morning and open up the Word of God. The truth. Here's the truth. Here's what baffles me in America today, and I'm, I'm done with this. We have truth. We know truth. We see the truth. We hear the truth, and yet we don't accept the truth. And yet we have the freedom to accept the truth. We have the freedom to apply the truth. We have freedom to read the truth. And if we, the Bible says, if we'll just take the freedom that we have to accept Christ, He will make us free. He will grow within us. He will build within us. He will do a work in us. He'll take the old and make it new. But the problem is we've been given freedom. But just like here in America, just like the physical, it just seems like we just don't seem to appreciate the blood that was spilled even on foreign lands that we might have what we have today. And we don't seem to get the concept that what Jesus did for us on the cross, that is what makes us free. And we don't seem to have an appreciation for it. And we just kind of push it aside. Or we just kind of nonchalantly take it for granted. But I'm here to tell you this morning, the truth will make you free. We have freedom in Christ. John 14, 6, you know this. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, or no man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. One more, Psalm 145, 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, and to all that call upon him in truth. Folks, we have freedom in Christ. We, we have the ability to be free from sin. We, we have freedom in the Spirit. We have the freedom to serve. And we have the freedom to seek truth. And yet, how often do we take those freedoms for granted? And I would encourage you this morning. We ought not take the freedom that God has given us as a nation, as a people, for granted. And I tell you this morning, we ought not take what God did for us by giving his son, what Christ did for us, the price that was paid on the old rugged cross. Let's not take it for granted. We have freedom. Praise God for the freedom he's given us. Standing to your feet.